Hey guys, it's your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another great commentary. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, at least one of the fights I'd had with my sister. Because it did seem like... Now, I, I'm not... Like, the last video was a real crowd pleaser. I'm not totally sure why, if you guys just hate, like, black pill orthodoxy as much as I do. Or if you just liked the story about the, the the family drama um i'm assuming at least some like the family drama so uh while i'm thinking about it let's talk about the at least at least some of the stuff with my sister so background with me and my sister my sister is much younger than me um and uh we were super close when we were growing up i've got one younger brother and one younger sister super close with my sister um, you know, problems like any siblings had, but overall, overall very close. Um, as she got older, I'm one who did, like, a lot of driving her around. Like, as she started to, like, socialize more with her friends and stuff, especially, you know, my dad wasn't around to drive her around because he was dead. He died when she was, um, when she was 11. And that's, like, probably the time where she started to turn into like you know an evil bitch um a lot of people said at the time and i believe that my mom probably still uses this excuse uh that well she became an evil bitch because you know her father who she was super close with died i i really don't believe that's it i think she became an evil bitch just for hormonal reasons i've seen Plenty of people, both guys and girls, become evil when they get to adolescence and teenagers. Now, like, I became, I changed a lot when I became an adolescent, but, like, I still consider, like, the, like the, stu like the stuff like me doing badly in school, that had nothing to do, like, that wasn't my parents' fault. That wasn't my parents' fault or society's fault or teacher's fault or anything like that. And I never blamed it on them. That was just, that was, there was other, there was, you know, that that's kind of who I am. That's the kind of the person I became. And it didn't change when, like, I never grew out of it or anything. Nobody was responsible for my academic shit except for me, okay? I didn't have any undiagnosed ADD or anything like that. I've never made any excuses. Even back in then, I didn't make any excuses. The, um, some of the moody shit, like, some, some of the stuff was, like, inexperienced, me being frustrated with my life and you know, there is place for blaming, blaming stuff with me. But when it came to the, some of the stuff like between me and my mom, it was like, there's place to blame me. When it came to the stuff between me and my dad, I will never waver on this. It was 100% his fault. So like, this, here's a guy, you guys know me, I take responsibility for shit. Um, and I admit like, you know, like even like with stuff with my dad, there were times that I did things that were wrong, very wrong. Um, but in terms of who instigated it, who was the cause of the constant problem, 100% him. It was literally 0% me. I deserve no blame whatsoever. Now, now, knowing what I know now, if I had to redo it, um, we would have gotten along much better because I would have been, I would have been able to like manage his emotions better and manage my own. Like I wouldn't have taken stuff as personally as I did. But it doesn't change the fact that every problem between us was instigated and maintained by him. Okay. Yes. Could I have reacted better? Absolutely. To, so if you, if, you, if you want to say that, like, well, you could have done things that would have improved it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I don't not object to that. But in terms of like, who was the cause of it? It was always him. Always. 100% of the time him. Okay. Anyway, no, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Obviously, I've got some anger issues with my dad. I could probably talk about him like all day for the rest of my life. But um, in fact, right now as I'm making it, I'm starting to get pissed again. But and that's all right. I want to talk about my anger towards my sister in this video. Um, so anyway, really close, um, really close uh, up until like she became an adolescent. My father died. Um, I, I don't doubt for a second that it was traumatic to her. I don't doubt for a second it was much more traumatic to her than anybody else. I did not realize this until a few years later, but apparently, like, I knew, like, I had been told that my dad was, I, we were all told that my dad was going to beat it. I realized about two or three months before that he was not going to make it. That's when I realized, that's when I realized he was a goner. There was, there was no hope. 
I don't know when my brother realized it or if he was told that. My sister was not told, apparently, until he actually died. Um, she had mentioned to me later that she was super traumatized about that and had a lot of anger toward, towards my mother. I've never really bought that, but I guess it's possible. Anyway, the, um, so anyway, this bad, this was a long time ago. Okay. So there was no such thing as Wi-Fi, um, which means we had one computer for the entire family. Uh, by, by the way, this story takes place a few years after my dad died. My sister was 14 or 15 at this time. Um, the, uh, so we are, um, I'm using the computer, the one computer in the living room. This is a morning on some weekend day. I think a Sunday it might've been a Saturday. I don't remember. Uh, my sister is in the kitchen with two of her friends and my mom. Uh, as big a fight as this ended up becoming between my sister and I, I don't remember what it was about. And I've got a pretty good memory about this stuff. I just don't remember what the fight was about. I know that if it, if it involved me and my sister, I guarantee you it was my 100% my sister's fault. But I don't know if like, in this, in this particular case, like every other fight I've had with my sister, I remember what it was about. This time I don't. Um, I think it probably had something to do with her getting into it with my mom and me finally having enough because I hear it and I, I overheard it and intervening. But I'm not sure. I'm certain that that's what the next fight was about a couple of years, a few years later. But um, I'm not sure. So I'm using the computer. She's doing something, being a bitch in the other room. Eventually, I say something. We start exchanging words. Me and me on the computer in the in the dining room. She's in um, the kitchen. So we're like shouting stuff at each other. I'm getting frustrated. Just to give you an idea, at this time, I was... Now, it doesn't matter because we're she's like a 14 or 15-year-old girl. But I was... Like, I'm scrawny now, right? Because, like, right now, think about, like, how scrawny I am. It's the same height. I was, I'm was i 5'9", just like I was then. But now I weigh, like, 190-something. I know, I know I don't look that heavy, but, like, again, if you see me... Like, if you see my gut, my gut is gigantic. Um, but, so... At this time, I'm 5'9", but I weighed about 118 pounds, probably more like 116. Like, you know, I, I was, I would have, I would basically, I would drink two 12-ounce, two, I'm not 12-ounce, two, like, I think 11, I don't know, two, two cans of Coke a day. I don't know if that's 12 or 11 ounces, I can't remember. Two cans of Coke a day, and I would have, like, a Rice Krispie treat. That's pretty much all I ate. And, um, just had no appetite. And, um... And then I was on very high doses of um, antidepressants that may have contributed. I'm not, I'm not certain. Um, excuse me. Did make it a lot easier to get drunk. Um, so, so I go over into the, uh, where, where are you yelling at, yelling at each other? I go over into the room. She is... Like, um, in terms of body type, very, like, a female version of me. Like, just incredibly scrawny. Like, she's filled out a little bit now. But, like, like especially, and she's just, like, very thin. Like, like just really, like, not tiny because she's just about average height. But um, just really skinny. Like, I mean, it's like, to give you an idea of how skinny she was, she, she is, like, even, like, when she grew up, when she was, like, in her, like, mid-20s, she was five, four and a half and weighed 106 pounds. So like really, really skinny. And um, so I got the reason I'm saying all this is as scrawny and weak as I was, like you're talking about somebody who even I could physically handle it easily. So she's mouthing off. I've had enough. So it wasn't like I was trying to strangle her per se, but I was basically kind of, I, so in frustration, I grab her by the collar parts of the shirt with each hand. I can't show it now because I'm using one hand to hold the phone and use like the shirt to strangle her. So I'm pushing her back like that. And I'm just like, you know, I, I can't even remember if I even said anything. And I was like, oh, you want to get tough with me now? And then um, she like, she, but she gets really pissed. She like pushes, pushes at me. And uh, like, cause I, I just like, so, like did like the half strangle thing, pushed her against the thing just to like, kind of like teach her a lesson and then shoved her back like that was going to be the end of it. But then she said, don't touch me. And that really pissed me off. Uh, I was like, and so I grabbed her again. 
The same thing. It pushed her back and I said, don't touch me? You telling me what to do now, you fucking bitch? Uh, I was like, oh, what, what the fuck are you going to do about it, huh? What are you going to do about it? And, um, of course, you know, my mom's there, so she intervenes. So you'll notice, like, if, like, I think you guys have noticed from, like, this, like, I've got a lot of stories that with my family that would have been a lot better if my mom hadn't been there to like before something really cool happened but my mom fucking intervened like my mom like jumps in between us right pushing me with one arm and pushing my sister back with the other arm really she's just pushing um she's just uh pushing me obviously because my sister's already like pushed pushed back against like (laughs) my sister's like pushed back like half (laughs) halfway over the counter at this point and um the uh and, and my, my mom's just like yelling like no no stop stop and meanwhile and i'd forgotten about this part this this you kind of had to be there but th- this part was funny too my I, I had we had this dog at the time it was like like 12 pounds or whatever <laughs> and like she's just going insane she's going because she's like what the hell is happening here (laughs) she's just like well all this is happening like she's barking like crazy and running all around and my sister's two friends are in there like just staring like what is what's going on here and um so you know finally you know i back off like so i I was actually it gets to a point where uh with my right arm i'm holding off my mom but i'm doing it in a way that like i'm trying not to like injure her and with my left arm much more roughly I'm holding, like, my sister's shirt and, like, pseudo-strangling her with her. I wasn't trying to actually strangle her, but I was was trying to mess the shirt up and, like, let my sister know, like, that she couldn't protect herself. And, um, she, uh, so, but then finally I'm like, okay, okay, sorry. You know, like, I came back to reality. I was like, okay, I went too far. I'm sorry. I apologize. And, um... You know, my sister, I, I can't remember if my sister said anything else about that or not. But then I was like, like I, I stopped, but I still felt like I hadn't won the exchange. And um, so I was like, I was like, OK, I'm I'm done. I'm done. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Marissa, talking to my sister. I'm like, I'm done for now. You know, I'm done for now. You know, your friends are here and mom's here. Your friends are going to go home at some point. Mom can't protect you 24 seven. And you know, when that happens, that it's, that's the end of the road for you. You're, you're a dead woman. Cause I'm, I'm going to kill you. And, um, I think that's what really set my sister over the edge. I think it was at that point, she like ran out of the room crying and went into, ran, ran into her room. Yeah. That you, you remember that next time you want to mouth off to me, bitch. Um, you know, I, like I'm not normally a psycho. It's for some reason I've got issues with my family about some. The um, but anyway, um, so uh, she runs off to her room crying. You know, whatever. And I realized I was like, "Oops, I shouldn't have done that." The uh, I it wasn't like I felt guilty per se, but I was like, I probably shouldn't have done it in front of two witnesses from outside the family. And I went a little too far. Um, I think that everything up until the threatening to kill her was justified. Um, but I really shouldn't have done that. I was like, I was so desperate to win the exchange that I shouldn't. And it like, I, I really think it was a cowardly thing to do. And I wish I hadn't, not because of the pain it caused her because I don't care, but because like, the thing is, would I have said that if her boyfriend had been there? No. No, I would absolutely not, because he'd have killed me. So that's why I feel like it's cowardly. You know, the, um, and that's why, uh, I, I really, I wish I hadn't said it. It's not like, I don't feel guilty for it for its own sake, like I do with the stuff with my dad. Um, and it's easy to, like, look at this now. I Like, I get, like, as I'm telling the story that I look like the bad guy, um, you guys weren't here you guys didn't have to deal with this shit. I mean, like this, this girl brought this shit on herself. She absolutely needed to be taught a lesson. I I should not have said what I said about the death threat. That was, that was, I went way too far. I took it beyond. I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, I'm really ashamed, you know, and I like, I, you know, like, uh, that I, I shouldn't have done that. Um, 
the other stuff though, no, she need, she needed to be she needed to be taught a lesson. And um the uh but anyway, so my mom's like, you know, like she always does, she's like, well, you know, kinda probably should apologize. So I was like, Yeah, you're right. And so I go up to her room. I go up to my sister's room. My sister's crying. One of her friends is up there. One of her friends just stayed in the kitchen the whole time. I guess I don't know what she was doing. She must have been like, what the fuck is going on here? And um, so I go up to my sister's room and, and, you know, I knock on the door, open the door. She's in there crying with one of her friends. And I'm like, look, Marissa, I, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean what I said about the threat. Uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely positively not going to, to hurt you. I would never do something like that, which is true. I wouldn't. And, um, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, you know, even touched you. I will never touch you again. I promise. Uh, that was, that was so wrong of me. I, I, I lost my cool. I, but you know, I, that's not going to happen again. That's not me. You know me, or, you know, at least you thought you knew me, but that's, it's not, it's really is not me. It will not happen again. I'm truly sorry. And she didn't really say anything like, and I, I wouldn't have expected her to at this point. At this point, like I, I did feel kind of bad. Like, I mean, cause I, I should just, cause like I shouldn't have done, it. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done either of those things. Well, again, like I said, I definitely shouldn't have threatened her. I, I just can't say that I shouldn't have done the violence part. Like, cause I, it wasn't like, like if I had hit her or like really tried to choke her or something, but I knew I wasn't physically hurting her. I never tried to physically hurt her. I was just trying to, you know, scare her and show her that she was a no, like a nothing and what she is. And I'm um, like, you know, what, what the fuck is she? She's like, that's the thing. She wanted to go around being all, all tough and all hard. Well, that's how, that's the way this ends. Like, you know, you're, you want to be a tough guy, but you're not. And um, that's like the, um, and uh, so no, I'm not sorry about, I'm not sorry about, I, like I wouldn't have done it because it wasn't worth it, but I, I still absolutely think she needed to be taught a lesson. Um, the, uh, so anyway, I go back down to, to my mom and my mom's like, well, what you did isn't cool. You got to go like back to therapy or whatever. You know how women are with therapy. And I'm like, all right, fine. You know, whatever. I'm just fine. And, uh, she's like, well, why don't you go out and like take a walk or something? So I apologize. Like they said, the one friend, poor friend is still sitting there in the kitchen. I apologize to her about making the scene, go on a walk, come back. seems like everything's basically resolved. The problem is that my sister was understandably still furious about it. Like she, she understood that I wasn't like a threat that I didn't like, wasn't going to do that, but she was pissed beyond pissed about what happened. Now, I don't know if she was pissed because I threatened to kill her or if it was, she was pissed because I had used vi like used physical force against her, or she was pissed because both of those things had happened in front of her friends. I really don't know. Maybe it was a combination. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The, uh, um, but she was furious. Again, I, I know, I know where she was coming from. So the thing, and, um, it's not really that by itself, I was mad about her being mad, maybe a little bit. It's just that her being still mad reminded me of all the stuff I was pissed at her about. So like when my mom tells me, because I was talking to me in private later that night saying like, I'm not sure she's ever going to forgive, forgive you for this. Like I was like, I was, I was mad at my mom for even saying that to me. Because I was like, what do you, what do you think this is? Like, what, what do you, what do you think this is? Like, m forgive me. Like, Marissa means absolutely nothing to me. Like, as far as I'm concerned, she's not even my sister. Like, you know, I shouldn't have done what I did. But if she dies tomorrow, I wouldn't care. Like, I do not give a shit what happens to her. Because my mom has said stuff like, she says she's not going to ask you for rides anymore. Because I used to be the one who gave her a ride to work. And I said, well, it's good she's not going to because there's no chance in hell she's getting them. You know, I'm never going to do anything to help her again. You know, the thing is, like, you know, I don't want to see her, look at her, hear from her again for the rest of my life. And um, so, you know, what? I'm like, like um, all right, so it's all, all good, right? But I think what happened, I think that would have probably been the end of it. I'm not certain. I'm not certain. I don't know. I think that would have been the end of it. If, but I, what I believe, I'm not certain about this because nobody's ever said anything to me, that my mother 
told my sister that I still felt horribly. I felt really bad and that I wanted to reconcile. I think that because that totally seems like the kind of thing my mom would have done. And that, I mean, that was not true. I had no interest in reconciling at all. I did not feel guilty. I felt like I said, I, 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 I went too far. I shouldn't have done it. Uh, did not feel guilty at all. The, like, and my, the apology was more of like, the only reason I really apologized was because of the immediate aftermath. Plus I knew that like, I really didn't have a choice. Like I went too far. I had to like show, show them that I hadn't just completely lost my mind and, um, and like, wasn't an actual danger. But I was never, I wasn't really sorry. I mean, there was maybe like a time where, where like at the peak of the emotions there was, but I wasn't, and I wasn't sorry. If, if I had caused her pain, like that distress, I considered that a good thing. Like I was happy that she was suffering. Um, but no, I was not, not sorry. And, but you know, whatever. I mean, I was just going to ignore her and not talk to her and that was going to be it. Um, the thing is my, like, you know, like I've grown up, she's grown up too, but at this time she's 14 or 15. She's stupid. She doesn't know anything. She's still pissed. And there's this one night, I think it was two nights before the, where I'm about, the place I'm about to get to, um, maybe three. I don't remember. I hear her talking on the phone to one of her friends and cause she's in the room right next to me. I, I don't think she knew I was listening. I don't think I, I wasn't really listening. It's just that she was talking loud enough I could hear it. But I don't think she knew that I could hear her. Um, my sister could be kind of airheaded with that stuff. Here, here's a like I'm, I know you guys want to hear the rest, but I, there, this this is something that used to happen. This was um, later on, like after everything got, had gotten resolved and stuff. One thing, like to give you an, like my sister was is she's pretty normal now, but she was kind of a strange person in high school. I'm not totally sure what was going on with her, but like, you know how annoying an alarm is in the morning? It's just like, dun, 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 and you like, so sometimes people put it on the other side of the room. So they have to get out of bed to like go and turn it off. You know, like that's like, because it's, it's, it's so annoying that you can't just lie in bed with it. Well, she would set her alarm, right? But it like genuinely wouldn't wake her up. I would, because I was in the room next to her, the alarm would wake me up. And, you know, I'd go and, and, you know, like I would, I would knock on the door, no response. I'd open the door. She's in there just sleeping while the alarm, which is right fucking next to her, is just going. Ah, 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 ah. And um, so then what I would do is because I knew she need, really needed to wake up is I would go and like go to like underneath the bed where there was the, um, you know, the thing gets plugged in. And then I would take the cord out. And on a different occasion, I had gone into her room when she wasn't there and taken the batteries out of the alarm so there wouldn't be any backup. That way, when she plugged it back in, she would have to reset the time and the alarm because that's just, you know, like, because 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 fuck her. And, you know, I'm like, I was sick of de dealing with that shit. And, like, after, like, the third time she replaced the batteries, she realized that, like, she never confronted me about it, but I guess she realized that, like, those batteries weren't going to stay. So I, after the third time, it didn't, it didn't have to happen. The, um... But, um, and then of course I wouldn't wake her up. So she would still oversleep and miss whatever it was she needed to go to. Um, but that had nothing to do with this. That was just because that's just, she, that's just horrible manners, what she was doing. But anyway, the reason I even bring that up is to show you there, there was something really off about her because who, like, I don't know anybody who's capable of sleeping through an alarm like that. I mean, it's waking me up in the next room. So anyway, um, I hear her talking on the phone to one of her friends. Don't know which one. Cause she had a few friends who were always around and two of them, I could never tell apart. And one of them was distinct, but I think she's think I, she ended up becoming estranged from her later on. Um, she said something like, yeah, no, my brother said something to me about that. And then there's a pause, like whatever, like a friend. And then my, uh, my, I hear my sister say the cool one. So I know what happened, obviously, is she said, my brother, the friend on the other line said, who, Ballface8020 or, you know, the other, my, my, my other brother. And, um, or she said, which one? And then my sister replies with the cool one. And, you know, so obviously not me, right? She's talking about the one who she gets along with, the one who she gets along with now, at least. And um, so... Um, now I wasn't like furious about that per se, like, and cause I can like, I, I kind of like understand like that. 
I, I don't, I wouldn't blame her for feeling that way at that time. Um, but instead of just saying like, you know, to say, to describe like my brother is the cool one and say, or even if she's saying that like that, whatever, but it's just say his name, right? Don't say the cool one. Not that I like, it's not a big deal. I, I'm not trying to make it a big deal, but it just kind of like reminds me like, yeah, you know, fuck off Marissa. The, um, just like how little I thought of her. And, um, so, um, I know she's still really pissed at me and, you know, whatever, it's all good. Like I said, like the fact that she's pissed at me is making me pissed, but I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to like, you know, like I said, I've got no, like, as far as I'm concerned, she, she no longer exists. We just don't talk to each other and that's it. But like I said, I think my mom told her that I had wanted to reconcile and that I was so upset. And my sister being immature and stupid and an idiot thinks like, oh, okay, well, I'm still really pissed at him. So instead of reconciling with him, I'm going to taunt him instead. So there's another day. My mom is not here this time. Okay. No, there's mom. Mom is not here to protect you. So we're going to get to see the real Marissa now. And, um, the, um, uh, and, um, uh, same type of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm on the computer in the dining room and, uh, I'm on the computer in the dining room. She's hanging out in the kitchen with one of her friends. Definitely, I'm not sure which friend it was. Definitely one of the friends who was over that day. And I know my sister, because uh, basically, like I said, we, we had gone at this point weeks with, without speaking to each other, you know, living in the same house, but we're not talking to each other at all. I know she knew that I heard this and that she was deliberately trying to make me hear this. And she would have only done something this stupid if she had thought that, like, I was actually feeling sorry about what I had done and what she would have only thought if my mom had said something to her. And that's it. Like, that's what I think, at least. So she's talking to one of her, to this friend, and she says, um, yeah, my mom's like, well, I'm so worried this means that when you go to college, you're never going to come back and visit. And I was like, well, not if he's here, I'm not. And I was so happy when I heard her say that because I had been waiting for weeks for an excuse when my mom wasn't there to start shit up with her. It's like, this time I'm not going to make the mistake. I'm not going to threaten her. I'm not going to touch her. I'm just going to use my words. So like, she knows that, you know, she knows, so like she, like, so there's nothing she can do. She can't go, she can't go crying to, she can't go crying to mom. She can't say she felt threatened. It's just, you know, this is, and also there's no more like, of course, me, a, a scrawny but still grown man for, versus a 14 or 15 year old girl. That's, that's not a fair fight. Words, that's even, that's an even playing field. I, I'm going to show her that I can beat her at her own game. And I've been even planning this insult for a couple of weeks because I'm not quick on my feet at all. So she says that thing. She's like, not if he's here, I'm not. And I say, shut the fuck up, you goddamn bitch. Like, from the other room, complete silence from the other room. Like, so I laid it in, like, I'm trying to say, like, is she going to respond? Like, like, one second, two second. I knew she wouldn't. And uh, she doesn't respond. And then I was like, hey, Marissa, you stupid fucking cunt. I was thinking about something. At the restaurant, because she, she worked at a restaurant. At the restaurant, uh, when you're working with the food, do they make you wear an extra pair of those latex gloves Cause I'm thinking like with all the dicks you're jerking off every day, like couldn't like some STD get spread that way? And again, complete silence. I let it sink in for, for a few minutes, for a few seconds. And by the way, I know that's not, that's, it isn't that clever, especially for something I've had days to think about, but, um, you know, whichever. And then I, I go like, well, I guess they're thinking they're probably mostly in your mouth. Right. Right. Marissa. And, and still silence. And I was like, yeah, you stupid slut. I, by the way, I know you've been on the pill since you're 13. What fucking whore gives it up that early? I was like, if dad were still around, how do you think he would feel knowing that his daughter had grown up to be a completely worthless whore? And um, com again, complete silence. And then I go, well, you think about that, you stupid worthless slut. And uh, I, I, you know, I left and walked out. Um, so... I just want to say, yes, I fucking won. And, they, uh, <laughs> yeah. and again, I know I look like the bad guy here. I know I look like a petty jerk. I know it looks like I went too far. No, I didn't. No, I did not. No. No, I did not. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had it coming. She had it coming. You know, you got you guys saw how I acted like with the thing about my dad. You saw how bad I felt. And uh, I I do I I I um I I um uh, I I I really wish I could take it back. And there was actually another fight I had with my dad that I actually feel even worse about. Those are the two ones I really wish I could take back. The other stuff I'm going to admit, um, I wouldn't have done it again. I don't feel too guilty about the. Um, but this, like, it was my sister. Look, my sister's a great person. Okay, she's a great wife, a great mother, a great friend. Uh, she's all. She's also been a great sister to me. Very, very supportive. I feel like years later, after we reconciled, um, the thing about the vi the violence was wrong. Um, in this case, she absolutely absolutely deserved it. I, I'm sort of still stand, still stand by that. And that's something that like, I, I doubt she was too permanently bothered by it, but I think like to have like a sibling, like get that deep, you know, with you get that deep on, um, you know, I'd like to say it taught her a lesson and I, I know it did teach her a lesson, but again, we ended up getting in another fight a few years later that I might end up talking about. That was the one where I told her that I hope she got raped. Uh, but anyway, so you'd think like after that, right, that we would just never speak again, which was my plan. Like I think like I said, I, I, my plan was to just never talk to her again. I was completely fine with that. And um, I also knew that she wouldn't talk to tell my mom about that because like, why would you want to like, like, no, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> nah, she wouldn't know. The, um, uh, but anyway, so we just don't talk to, um, we, we don't talk for like, I think like a month, two months. I, I don't remember. Then one night she comes home and she's just like drunk out of her mind, like, like ridiculously super drunk. And she's like, Hey man, like, it's like she, she sounded like she was talking more like she was high than she was drunk. Cause like we, and this was after us not talking for months. I'm, I'm there like in the living room watching TV. She's like, Hey man, what's going on? Yo, and I'm like, what, the, what the hell, Marissa? What the fuck, man? What are you, are you okay? What's going on? And she's like, no, man, I'm cool as shit, man. I'm cool as shit. And then she like puts out her hand to like shake my hand or something, and like I put it like I put it out like I, but it, she didn't want to shake hands. She wanted to like do some kind of like hand slide thing. She's like, no, I'm cool as shit, man. Look, look, I'm just really sorry about all the tension that's been going on between us. You know, man, I think you know we we should just let that shit go. And I was like, um, okay, <laughs> like, wh are what? Like, are, are you on something? What, Marissa, what, what's wrong? And she said, she said it again. She's like, no, man, totally. I'm cool as shit, man. Talk to you later, man. And, uh, and she doesn't say, so I don't, I still don't know what, I think she was just drunk, but I, who, who the fuck knows? Like she's a teenage girl, so they're idiots. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, um. After that, though, I was like, okay, okay. The, uh, so we, the, we ended up, um, you know, kind of gradually, like we were no longer close. Like we were no, like our relationship was now like super distant, but we were able to like communicate and like, and be civil and stuff for the most part. Um, and uh, like until the big fight, um, before she went to college again, might talk about that in a later video. We'll see. Um, that's all for now. I'll see. Oh, 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 one more thing I want to say before I go. Um, regardless of whether I feel guilty or not about these things, I, I do want to reteriorate that if I was in a similar situation today, it wouldn't have happened. Like even now, like when I'm acting all angry and stuff, it's only because I'm like getting back into that mindset that I had then. Like these days I don't walk around with that kind of anger and stuff nor do I have this desire to like win exchanges. Like, you know, I'm more into at this stage of my life, I really value humility and, um, you know, humility, compassion, and, um, you know, taking the high road because I really believe that taking the high road is not something you do out of some blue pilled society thing of being the better person taking the high road is something you do for yourself, you know, and I know this as somebody who's dealt with anger for a long time, that it's a dead end. Uh, I've talked about like that, you know, potentially the reaction, the only action is really being cowardly because the only thing you can do with anger, you can't do anything about it unless you're stronger than the other person you're angry, the anger with. I don't necessarily mean physically stronger, but you have the means to hurt them more than they can hurt you. 
that might not always be the case. So there's might be times where you can't do it and you just have to stew, like you're just going to have to stew there and do nothing. Um, so, you know, I don't want to make it seem like I'm proud of it. Like part of me is ashamed. I'm not necessarily sorry about the pain I caused because I think it was in this case, especially it was pain that was extremely deserved. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't have done it again. Uh, maybe if I seem when I'm telling the story, like I'm proud of it, uh, Again, when I'm reliving it, I probably am, and that's wrong of me. But like as, as of now, like when I'm able to regain my bearings, take a step back, I see that there was nothing admirable about this behavior. If I had done it again, it, it, I would. I, if it came up again, I would have absolutely taken the high road, and it would have been better for her. It would have been better for her, and it, but most of all, it would have been better for me. And that that's something I really believe in. You know, it's something I really believe that. Um, you know, that doing the right thing, behaving the right way, um, that there, there's no honor in, in bullying. There's no, there's no honor in bullying or force or violence. Um, you know, um, and, uh, not there, there can be exceptional circumstances where you do have to be forceful or even violent, but there's never any honor in, in the in and of itself there's never any honor in the violence or in the force when it like when it, if it's necessary it's just that it's a tragic necessity and really being not just being a man but being a, a human being like a like a, a a matured human is about that stuff about being the about being the um about taking the high road and taking the high road is the only way in the long term you're ever going to have any type of inner peace at all and that you're ever going to be able to be happy. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next.